everyone. The Feast of Corpus Christi was instituted by Pope Urban IV in 1264, but around this time unorthodox opinions were circulating and the feast was instituted in the 13th century to counteract these views. We believe, as Catholics, that the consecrated bread you receive is not just a symbol of Christ's presence, it is Christ himself. Here we differ from many of our separated Christian brethren. Catholics proclaim their faith in Jesus by coming to Mass every Sunday and receiving him worthily in Holy Communion. However, it presupposes that we are living Christian lives in line with the commandments of God and Church teaching. No one is obliged to receive Holy Communion at every Mass, especially if their conscience is bothering them. No pressure should be put on anyone to do so. The Church only requires you to receive the Eucharist once a year during the Easter season. Recently, some Catholics have mistakenly got the impression that the Church has changed her teaching on the admission to Holy Communion of people who have not been married in Church or are living together or are divorced and remarried outside the Church. Well, it hasn't. What Pope Francis wanted is that church leaders listen with more compassion and understanding to each person's situation and leave no stone unturned to help them return to the sacraments of penance and Holy Communion rather than tarring everyone with the same brush and doing precious little to help them, just laying down the law. He's dead against priests just laying down the law and then sort of washing their hands of the situation. That's not pastoral care. But it doesn't mean that the church has changed her teaching on the permanence of marriage and our eligibility to receive the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist. I think it's better to err on the side of caution here. If someone has fallen away from the practice of their faith and they no longer go to Sunday Mass, but they wish to receive the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of penance, sorry, is normally the first port of call before returning to Holy Communion, and I think that stands to reason. The situation changes, however, if there are mitigating circumstances such as illness or if they are dependent on others to take them to Mass, or if the weather is atrocious, or if you can't find a church, or if you're a child or even a teenager and there's no one to go with you. The church is an understanding mother, not a slave driver. We know there are stumbling blocks to sharing Holy Communion with other Christian bodies who don't share our teaching on the Eucharist, the priesthood, and some ma major moral issues. But Catholics too need to examine their consciences on where they stand on these issues before receiving Holy Communion. I know some bishops, for instance, and it was particularly so in Ireland during the recent referendum, that bishops said even if people voted yes in the referendum, they shouldn't go to Holy Communion unless they'd been to confession first. But a lot of bishops feel ill at ease or allowing Holy Communion to be given, for instance, to politicians or even the general population who condone abortion and such things. The same could apply to sins of the mind, as St. Francis brings out, such as our stubbornness to forgive, our envy and pride. If it weren't for the fact that we were weak human beings, we wouldn't need Holy Communion in the first place. At Mass, we draw on his strength, which enables us live as he taught and reach heaven. Jesus said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will draw life from me. He is the living bread come down from heaven who brings life to our souls. Thank you all for listening and God bless you. Oh.